forgiveness. Forgiveness, Mel Kelly. Once upon a time, when I was a little boy, I used to walk past this bike shop every single day. In the window, there was this gleaming new bike that I really, really wanted. So, every night, I got down on my knees and I prayed, and I prayed to God for that bike. Then I found out, God doesn't work that way. <laughs> So I stole the bike and prayed to forgive this afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, most honoured guests, contest chair, forgiveness doesn't work that way either. <laughs> As a young boy growing up in Ireland, I learned about the long, difficult history between Ireland and England. People here talk about the First and the Second World War. Together, it's only ten years. The war between Ireland and England was over 800 years. They took our land, our language, our liberty. We Irish had every reason to be angry, every reason to be bitter. My grandfather lived under the last years of English rule. I asked him about this one time. He said, you must have been angry, you must have wanted revenge. He said, yes, of course, and we did get our revenge. In the War of Independence, we finally drove the English out. But we made a mistake, a big mistake. We hadn't learned to forgive. It taken us 800 years to drive the English out. And no sooner had they gone, and we started fighting amongst ourselves. Civil war, brother killing brother, families torn apart. The killing didn't stop until we learned to forgive. As my grandfather said, when you stand at the crossroads of hatred and forgiveness, hatred hurts everyone. Forgiveness allows you to heal and move on. My grandfather told this message to my brothers and sisters and I. Some of them learned it a bit quicker than I did. My older sister went to university in England. <laughs> we didn't really approve, but we thought she should be back in no time at all. After her studies, she decided to stay on. Then things went from bad to worse. She called one day. She was getting married. <laughs> to an Englishman. <laughs> Today they've got two little kids. Two little English kids. <laughs> Laura and Adam. Two little, sweet, beautiful, charming English kids. <laughs> I never thought I would warm to them. But when I first met them, I melted like a snowman in the Sahara Desert. My grandfather would have approved. Laura says I'm her favourite uncle. Yeah. It's because she only sees me once a year. <laughs> <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi once said, The weak cannot forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. Well, that's easy for Gandhi to say. Mm -hmm. He hasn't dated so many girls I have. <laughs> You'd have to be Superman to forgive some of those. <laughs> and then I joined Toastmasters, and I met great people from all over the world. People from America, Australia, people from Germany, from China, people from Poland, Portugal, and uh, Martin from England. <laughs> People I've spoken with, people I've laughed with, people I've cried with. Well, uh, Martin didn't cry. He doesn't have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> but people I've learned so much from. Even Martin. In 1920, 
England faced Ireland in a football stadium called Crow Park. Not for sport, but for war. There was a massacre that is known as Bloody Sunday. Crow Park is the third largest stadium in Europe and has been used for Irish games only for over 100 years. In 2007, there was a huge rugby game between Ireland and England. And as an act of conciliation, Crow Park was opened for this game. Before the game, the national anthems are played. For the English national anthem, booing, hissing, heckling were expected. Instead, it was met with a dignified silence. The game was hard fought. Ireland went on to win. It was a miracle. But the most moving thing wasn't Ireland winning the game. It's what happened after the final whistle. The Irish players went over to their English opponents and hugged, embraced and cried. Not as enemies, but as old friends. They had learned the lesson. And what about you? Have you been wronged? Have you been hurt? Have you had your heart broken? Have you stood at that crossroads of hatred and forgiveness? As my grandfather said, hatred hurts everyone. Forgiveness allows you to heal and move on. Is it time for you to start forgiving today? Mm.